Hello, brothers and sisters out there. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Come on in. Come on in and get ready to get into this uh, content. You're not going to be here that long tonight. I know a lot of you want to look at the basketball game. You will not be here that long tonight. I'm going to get you in and out in a decent time. So come on in. Come on in so we can go ahead and jump in on this. How you doing, uh, Cousin Patricia? How you doing, Sister Paula? How you doing? Come on in, brother. Come on in, sister, so we can get to this content. Like I say, I'm not going to keep you here that long tonight. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. We're about to get into it shortly. I'm waiting for a few more people to join in. And once a few more people join in, we're going to jump right in on this content. Get ready uh, for the new week, my brother and sister. Uh, if the Lord allows to get to this new week, you're even blessed to be here. Sister Paula, oh, thank you so much for saying happy uh, Father Day. Thank you. How you doing, Sister Deborah Scott? How you doing? How you doing? Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sister. We're about to get into this content tonight. I'm not going to keep you long. I promise you. I'm going to go ahead and jump in on it in a few seconds. It's almost the best time for me to go ahead and jump in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sisters. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you all had a good weekend. I know that I have. My brother and sister, I'm doing just like the Flintstone. Yabba dabba do, baby. And I hope all of you all are doing quite well. Uh, how you doing, Sister Keisha? I see you clocking in. Sister Sonia William, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? My brothers and sisters out there in Facebook land. Uh, about to jump into this topic. First of all, as you know, my brother and sister, this is your first time uh, looking at me in this broadcast. My name is Tony M. Tuma, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationship pertaining to that of a man and a woman from a biblical standpoint. Thank you, Sister Keisha, from a biblical standpoint. When I say a biblical standpoint, God had a unique relationship with the man, Adam. And after he had a unique relationship with Adam, he put Adam into a deep sleep, or if you want to say it's a coma, he reached into Adam's side. He opened the rib. I mean, he opened Adam's side, got the rib, stepped to the side, formed Eve. And he represented Eve back to Adam. And at that particular point, uh, Adam said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, I should call a woman because she came from man. My brother and sister, this particular t-shirt, this is how a relationship is. You see, you have God here. You have God at the top of the pyramid, okay? You have God, and God created man, that man being Adam. He put Adam to sleep, and once he put Adam to sleep, the man, he stepped to the side of their rib, and he formed what is called a woman. And he brought them together right here. So as you see, my brother and sister, it takes three to uh, form a relationship, a good, solid relationship. It takes three. It takes God, the man, God, the woman. And then it takes God, the man, and the woman to form a good relationship, okay? Now, if you don't believe in the concept of uh, a man and a woman being in a relationship, my brother and sister, you believe in anything, Gail, you could believe whatever you want to do, but this particular broadcast, I talk strictly about the relationship between a man and a woman from a biblical standpoint. With that said, we're going to jump into this topic tonight. Tonight's topic is, if a woman has these qualities, a man of purpose will never let her go. Again, if a woman has these qualities... A man of purpose will never let her go. I'm emphasizing this again. If a woman has these qualities, a man of purpose will never let her go. Now, what is a man of purpose? How you doing, Sister uh, Pamela? A man of purpose, my brother and sister, is a man that he has a unique relationship with God. That means uh, this man know who he is, why he's here on earth, and where he's going. He's a narrow-minded man. He's not a broad-minded way because, as you know, Jesus said, broad is the way that lead to destruction and men will follow it. But the man or woman that follow the narrow way, they will find life. So this is what a purpose man does. He have a gift. He understands his gift. And with that gift, he's going to uh, go with God's purpose in his life. His life is dedicated to doing those things that please the Lord. And not only that, this man is giving a woman. 
And when this man is given a woman, this man have uh, actually gained favor from the Lord. So brother, if you ever get a good woman, not a, a perfect woman, but if you ever get a good woman, you have gotten uh, a, another gift from God and you are very, very high on the Lord's list. Now, uh, as you know, I said qualities, and I'm going to name those qualities shortly. Now, qualities, my brother, and quality, my sister, is defined as an essential or distinct characteristic, or to say it differently, the standards of something as measured against other things of a similar kind, the degree of excellence of something. We're talking about a unique woman. That's what we're talking about. Now, if there is a single brother out there, or if there are any single brothers out there, uh, there is a that is looking for a good woman. You're not looking for a counterfeit woman, now, brother. You're not looking for a counterfeit woman. You're looking for a legit woman. Okay, you're looking for a legit woman, not a counterfeit. So keep in mind, there aren't any perfect women out there, brothers. There's no. However. There is a woman out there that can be right and legit for you. Now, what does legit mean? And we're not talking about MC Hammer to legit to quit. We're talking about legit. Legit is defined as an extremely good, truly, and genuine. That's what legit means. And what is a counterfeit? A counterfeit is uh, defined as to make an exact imitation of something of value or valuable or important with the intent to deceive or defraud. So, brother, I'm going to uh, go down. I'm going to make some points about how you can tell a woman that is legit and a woman that is counterfeit. So, I'm going to put them uh, side by side. Okay, side by side. The legit women and the counterfeit women. As you know, counterfeit look real. Counterfeit look real. As a matter of fact, this is what I'm I'm told. This is what I'm told. How does an FBI agent? Now, this is what I told. I should have checked it out, but this is what I'm told. How can an FBI agent quickly discern between what is a legitimate twenty dollar bill and something that's counterfeit? From what I was told, they are trained to study what a counterfeit. Uh, dollar look like, okay, what a counterfeit dollar look like, or a 20. So when a FBI agent is able to look at a $20 uh, dollar bill, he or she is instantly can tell whether it's a counterfeit or not. Not as like when you go in the stores, you know, those little pins that they put over um, those 20. You know, that's the only way, but an FBI agent, from what I'm told, doesn't have to do that. So that is the difference between a legit and a counterfeit. A counterfeit look real, but it's not real. Now, here are 10 points of a good woman or a legit woman compared to uh, a counterfeit. And this is described by this young lady named Melissa Ringstap. And I have to give this lady two thumbs up on this particular type of woman. And she got some characteristics. And at the end, I'm going to tell you exactly what type of woman Melissa is talking about when we are talking about a legit woman. Here are the difference between a legit and a counterfeit woman. These are the legit. Now, when it comes to a legit woman, my brothers, when it comes to a legit woman, my sister, brother, if you are seeking a wife, now sister, don't go looking for no man. This is on the man. If a man is seeking a legit woman, this is a characteristic of a legit woman. She has faith, which means she serves God. She serves God with all her heart, with all her will, and all of her mind. This is a legit woman. A counterfeit will play like her uh, heart will play like her will, will play like her mind is on God. You could tell a legit woman when it comes to God and one that, and you could tell a legit woman to counterfeit. And a lot of times they don't even have to open their mouth. A legit woman, you could tell, you could look at her how she dressed because it's about first impression. Based a lot of time on how a woman dressed, because all women, they always going to check, most of women, they're going to check themselves out before they go. If a woman claim to be into God, she is going to dress in a modest way. How you doing, Sister Nisa? She's going to dress in a uh, 
modest way. That doesn't mean that she she's going to uh, look like she's annoying or anything, but she's going to dress in a respectable way. Understand? Compared to a woman that likes to show a counterfeit, that likes to show all her boobs, likes to show a lot of flesh, her thighs, and doing all that twerking stuff. That And then these type of women, they claim to be uh, followers of the Lord. They claim to be followers of the Lord, but you can look how they dress that they're not followers of the Lord. Then how they talk. A woman that's legit, she's not going to be doing all those cursing words because she can really articulate her thoughts, even if she get up, upset. Now, one of these other type of women, you can could, you could see she like to use uh, profanity a lot and she doesn't know how to express herself in a calm way. Even if she get upset, you're going to know that these type of women, they like to cuss a lot, like a sailor. So you could tell these type of women, whether they believe in God, because when a, man, a woman believes in God, she's going to show it because the Lord is inside of her and it's going to be reflected out. Remember my brother and sister, I said when it comes to a relationship, it's, out, it's inside out. A woman that is a, a follower of the Lord, you're going to see the Lord is in her and it's going to be radiated out. You're going to see the aura. A woman that is not about the Lord, she's going to be talking, talking about the Lord, but it's not in her. It's not in her. It's a counterfeit. Number two, how you could tell if a woman have a, a good quality for a man of purpose versus a counterfeit. She is married ready. She is married ready, just like Ruth. When Boaz uh, discovered Ruth, Ruth was already married ready. A mar she's married ready, and she will respect her husband, and she will come into a re the relationship as a help me. That's how she will come, as a help me. Look, let me see what Sister Keisha said. That's not always true. I show some cleavage here and there, but I love God still a process. Okay, let me let me define what I'm talking about, Keisha. Let me I'm, I'm let me define what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a woman that show a lot of her boobs. That's what I'm talking about. It's nothing wrong with a woman getting a little air. It's nothing wrong with that. And I use the word modest. Okay, it's nothing wrong with a woman. If she getting a little air, but I talk about when she's showing a whole lot of it. Cause let me tell you this: most of the time, when a man look at a woman, especially if I put it this way, when a man look at a woman and she's showing a lot of boobs, that's what he's concentrating on. And that, and I'm just talking from a man's standpoint. When a woman show a lot of boobs, he's focused on her boobs, and he focuses on touching her boobs and putting her boobs in his mouth. I'm just telling you how men think. I'm just telling you, but it ain't nothing wrong with the woman getting a little air, but not a whole lot of it, and a, lot, and a woman showing a lot of her flesh. I, like I said, I'm not talking about she dressing like a no one. She could dress in a modest way, okay? Oh, not, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, uh, Sister Keisha, not trying to hurt your feelings, but back to uh, number two. She is married, ready, and she's like Ruth, and she respects her husband, and she will come into the, the relationship as a help me. These type of women, they understand that they come into the relationship as a help me. They're not coming into the relationship seeing what he could do for me. Uh-uh. She coming in with the attitude, how can I add to the purpose what the Lord gave to this man? And when I talk about a man of purpose, I'm talking about a spiritual man. Keep in mind, my brother and sister, I'm talking about a spiritual man. I'm not talking about a worldly man. There's, I'm talking. There's this spiritual man, and then there's this man that's worldly. Sister uh, Nisa said, "Respect yourself, and you will get respect." That's true, sister. That's very true. So, if this woman respects her husband, she's gonna respect her husband in private, and she's gonna respect him in public. Now, a woman that's a counterfeit, she's gonna pretend. That she respect her husband, and he gonna see he gonna see some little traits in it, and then sometime as she get on the outside, he gonna really tell you because the truth is in the pudding, and she gonna show it sometime. Sometimes she's gonna embarrass this man in public. I have seen it before. I have seen it go down, and people be looking just like that. So I'm telling you, my brother and sister, when it comes to a uh, a 
a woman that's legit and a woman that's uh, a counterfeit, you could tell based on how she respects her husband and if she come into the relationship as a help me, not one that's seeing what she can get out of the relationship, but what she can invest in the relationship. She's coming into the relationship to invest 100% like the man is supposed to be investing 100%. Now, a worldly woman, she's going to come into the situation talking about, I'm going to bring 50% and he need to bring 50%. No, 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 no. When you come into a relationship, you're supposed to be all in 100%. The woman come in 100%. The man come in 100%. Number three, she will be mothering. She will be mothering. These type of women, if they follow God, they're going to understand how to nurture and uh, guide their children, okay? If they are wife, they're going to they understand the order. They understand the order. They understand God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man, and her husband is the head of her, okay? And like I have you this illustrated from not only me, but Sister Fantasia. Sister Fantasia, and you all know the saying of Fantasia. She used the illustration of like a woman is like a neck, and her husband is like the head. You need the neck to support the head. That's how Sister Fantasia said it, and I, and I firmly believe in what she said, you know, the woman is the, uh, she supports the man. You understand? Like the man following the Lord, the woman is following the, the man as long as he following Christ, okay? So, but far as the mothering goes, she really is in tune with her children. She is looking out for the best of her children. She one of these ladies that will lay down her life for her children. Her children are a top priority other than her husband and the Lord. She understand her husband is the head. She understand that her husband get top priority. She understand that her children get second priority. She understand that she's not going to leave her children unattended. She's not going to just throw her children off on other people to stay out in the street. She's not going to do that. And her children going to, when her children come up, they're going to be proud to say, that's my mama. Four, she is health conscious. She's very careful on what she takes into her body. She's very careful because she knows she needs to be healthy to uh, maintain the home, to maintain her relationship with her husband, to maintain her relationship with her children, her family, her friends. And I'm going to get to something there shortly, but her, the main thing, she's so health conscious because guess what? She knows that the spirit of the Lord resides in her body. So that's the first thing she think about. I want to have a healthy body because I know that the Lord's spirit resides in me. Number four, she is a uh, new at number five. She has a servant, a servant demeanor. She have a servant demeanor. You all remember last night where well, some of you, I did a little broadcast, but it kind of went wacky. But I made a point. I use an illustration like, well, this is about two nights ago. I use an illustration by Chick-fil-A. And it's talk, and it's about men and women. When it comes to uh, a serving mentality, it's go for the husband as well as the woman, the wife. If you are ever going to Chick Fil A, you you see that that excellent customer service, right? And that is a model how some men ought to do for their family and for the woman. But right now, I'm talking about the quality that the woman has. And as you all notice. When you go to somewhere like Chick-fil-A, you already notice that no matter how the old people feel in there, they're working in there, they always have a pleasant smile on their face, they always talk nice to you, and they always make sure that everything is pleasant. And at the end, what do they say? My pleasure. My pleasure. Can I help you? My pleasure. Do you need anything else? My pleasure. That's the kind of mentality a good woman has. And that's the type of mentality that you brother need to have when it comes to your home too, okay? And not only this, and this is another important thing about a woman. Not only does she t uh, make sure that her husband is okay, not only does she make sure that her children, her child or children are okay, not only does she make sure that her family are okay, not only does she make sure that her friends are okay, but this is a key thing about a good woman. She is very tenderhearted to strangers. What do I mean by that? very tender hearted to someone that she doesn't know. As you know, and I have told you all this before, like like if you see someone someone homeless, 
Some people look at homeless people like they are bombs, right? A lot of times these people aren't bombs, okay? Life threw a curve at them. They could have lost their job. Because to tell you the truth, my brother and sister, and you know this, a lot of people work paycheck to paycheck. In the United States of America, a lot of people work paycheck to paycheck. A lot of people don't have no savings and stuff. So when life throws a curve at some of these people, they may find themselves on the street. So when you see a, a man or woman on the street, my brother, sister, don't assume that these people are bonds or they looking to move. Some of them are trying to look for stuff. But sometimes people, life happens. How you doing, brother Jane? Life happens. And I'm going to give you an illustration when I say strangers. Like, if my wife and I, if we are in the car together, and like if we're getting off the interstate or whatever, whatever, if she sees a stranger, this is how, my, and I'm not trying to put her on no pedestal because I only put the Lord Jesus on the pedestal. This is what Cinderella would do. Cinderella would roll down her window, and she don't know these people. She will uh, give them some money. And not in, and it's and how she be thinking, it's not what they're gonna do with the money. That's what some people be thinking. All here she gonna do is go buy some liquor or something like that. She don't think about that. She think about doing something because these people appear to be in need. You understand? So once she gives it up to those people, she'll even go by the bank if she ain't got no money. We'll go by the bank or whatever. And she'll do little stuff like that. And this is what, brother, if you have a woman that is conscious of other people that she don't know. You got a good woman. I'm telling you, you got a good woman. Number six, she is a wise steward, which means she know how to handle money. She know how to handle money. She's not going to play with the money. If her husband put some money in her hand, she's going to take care of family business first. She's going to make sure that the, the uh, needs and necessity of the home is met first. And if anything left over, she could do whatever she want to do. Brothers, let me tell you this. If you give your woman some money to manage the house, whatever you give her, long as everything is taken care of in the house, good. If she have anything left over, don't look for her to put no money back in your hand. Let her do whatever she want to do. Long as the needs of the family are kept. Brother, if you have a good woman, she's going to make sure when you give her money, and even with her own money, she's not going to uh, play with it. She might do some, she might splurge every now and then, but she's going to make sure that every, all the needs are taken care of first in the home. You understand? That's what she's going to do. Number seven, she is an industrious woman, which means she's not lazy. And you all know, I always use uh, Sister Ruth in there. Remember, before Ruth met Bowie, what? Ruth was on her grind, right? She had a job. She was not looking for a man to take care of her. That's what I mean. She was industrial. Ruth was not a lazy woman. Brother, the counterfeit woman, she's a lazy woman. She's going to come up to you with her hands out. She's going to be looking for you to take care of her. She's not coming into the relationship uh, seeing what she could do to add to the relationship, what she could do to multiply whatever God put in you to give to her. Because I always say, when a good woman is in in the relationship, whatever the man give to her, if she's following the man, if he's following Christ, whatever you put into a woman, she's an incubator and she can multiply. A woman is like Wall Street. She's like Wall Street. For those of you that like to invest, if you whatever you invest into a good woman, she's gonna come back with a profit. I ain't talking about one of those profit that speak was supposed to be coming down the road. Uh, uh I'm talking about a profit, a, a net gain. That's what I'm talking about. Whatever you give to a woman, she's gonna come back. Number eight, she's a good homemaker. Even if she has a job, she is a good homemaker because she know how to separate. Even if she's working on the outside, she know how to separate her business. Even if she running a business, she know how to separate the business. Or even if she work for, for someone, she know how to separate that from her husband and her family. She know how to turn it off like that. When she walk out the door to go to her job or whatever, she's business. When she come back in the home, she's the wife and the mother. She got that kind of mentality. She know, She doesn't get it confused. 
She makes sure that everything is on point in the home. The home, most of the time, it runs like a ship. Even, she don't have to say stuff like, wait till your dad to get home. She don't have to do that. Because her children, they know just by them looking in her eyes, they know that she take care of business. She, she know how to discipline her children in a loving and kind way. She don't have to run around telling her children, stop doing this, stop doing that. Mm -mm. You brother and sister, when you all used to go to worship, just check this out for, for, for some of you old school people. Have you ever been in worship service when you was young and you could have been acting up a little way and you felt some eyes looking at you and you look and your mama looking at you and you know when your mama looking at you, she didn't have to say nothing. You know what I mean? You knew to straighten up right then. These are the type of women I'm talking about. They don't have to say nothing. And she don't have to be in no worship service. She could be at home and her children, their eyes can meet their mama eyes. And they know that mama is not playing. But she know how to handle them, not with an iron fist, but a caring fist. Okay? And she doesn't have to wait till dad to get home. To, to share nothing with the dad because she know how to take care of business. Her children respect her. Her husband respect her. And not only that, when it comes to a good homemaker, the husband, he's not going to make, he's not going to come home and let her do everything. He's going to help out sometime because guess what? She's a help me to him. And he's, even though he's the head and leader in the home, he's going to help around the home too. Okay. And they're going to get whatever their arrangement is. That's what they're going to do. Because everything is not going to be on a woman. Number nine, she is time conscious. She is time conscious. If you have a woman that got one of these uh, qualities out of the uh, 10 that I'm naming now, I'm on number nine. She have time. She got time conscious. What do I mean by that? She make time for God. She make time for her husband. She make time for her children. She make time for her, her family, her friends, and she even take time for herself because a good woman, after she take care of all her business, and a man should be like that too, but it, and brothers, when your woman is taking care of all this business, you need to let her have time to herself. She Let her get away, let her do something on her own. Let her, don't, don't keep track of her everything. Sometimes, if long as she taking care of the home, long I mean, long as she worshiping the Lord first, brothers, and then she know that you right behind the Lord, and then the children, and family, friends, strangers, and all that. After she does everything, let give that woman some peace. Let her do what she want to do. If you have small children, brother, sometimes you need to take care of those children and tell her go ahead and do what she she want to do. She might even be inclined to want to take the children with her. Then you say, no, 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 don't take the children. Leave him. I got it. I got you. I got you. Go ahead. If she want to hang out with some of her girlfriend, now this is a tricky thing, brother. This is a tricky thing. You can't have a counterfeit on this. If she want to hang out with a girlfriend, let her hang out with a girlfriend. Those, now this is a catcher. This is a catcher. You don't want her hanging around with street women. You don't want you don't want that because uh corrupt friends could uh mess up good uh habits. Okay? That's Bible. Foolish people hang with foolish people. Wise people hang with wise people. So what I'm saying, brother, give her some time to herself. Let her do her thing. Number 10. If a woman had these qualities and man of purple would never let her go. Beauty. This type of woman. She is conscious, not all of her health, her health on the inside, meaning her spiritual health, her soul. But I'm talking about on the outside. This woman cares about her body. She makes sure she is clean and she makes sure that she's presentable. When I say presentable, she makes sure that she's attracted to her husband. She doesn't let herself go. Even if she can, even if she might uh, pick up a few pounds, like some of you brothers, you're going to pick up a few pounds too, maybe. But long as she's clean and she keep herself up, you don't want her walk around with 
quote unquote rollers and all that kind of stuff just because she's in a relationship with you. And this is another thing, sister. When you in a relationship with a man, and this go for you brothers too, and you all have heard the saying, whatever you did to get that person, continue to do it. But most people, men and women, they get lazy. They get lazy and they don't do what they are uh, used to do. But this is my recommendation for men as well as the sisters, okay? Whatever you did in the early part of the relationship, you continue to do that and multiply what you were doing. Add and multiply. Do not subtract or divide. Now, a woman that really care about herself, she's going to care about how she look. She's going to definitely care about how she look. She's going to make sure she smell good. She's clean. And she not going to go out the house with a bonnet on her head. Uh-oh, I stepped on some nerve. Then she not going to go out the house with some pajamas on. Uh-oh, I stepped on some body, uh, feet. She's going to make sure that she's presentable when she goes out in public. Because why? She represents two. She's representing the Lord first, and then she'll represent you, uh, brother. So this is what I'm saying. Brother, you're going to either have a woman that's legitimate, or you're going to have a counterfeit. And I'm about to hit these 10 points right quick again. Uh, legit counterfeit. Legit. She has faith in God. She has faith in God. With her, her uh, heart, her will, her emotion. The counterfeit. She doesn't. She plays like that. She plays like she's into God and stuff. You can see it based on what I said. How she talks. How she talks. Now, a woman that how she that's into the Lord, she's gonna make sure she don't use a whole bunch of profanity and stuff, okay? She's not gonna do that. She's not gonna be like a sailor, okay? She's gonna make sure she know how to express herself, even if she get angry. She's gonna know how she, she's not gonna be one of those women that just cuss and all that kind of stuff. And she's gonna be very thoughtful of how she dress. Because she don't want everybody seeing her goods. She want her husband seeing most of her goods. She don't want all these other men looking at her goods. She want her husband looking at her goods. Only the Lord and her husband need to look at what all she got. You understand? So she's mindful of how she think, how she talk, and how she dress. Uh, legit counterfeit. Number two, she's married ready. She will respect her husband in public or private. Counterfeit. She don't care. She'll talk to him any kind of way in the house and she'll talk to him any kind of way or behave any kind of way in public. Number three, um, legit counterfeit. Number three, she's mothering. She makes sure that her children are on point. She know how to discipline her children with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment. She know how to raise her children and they respect her. And she makes sure she don't she don't dump her children off on other people so she can go and party. She don't do all that. She makes sure she take care of her children. She knew she brought them into this world. So that's her and her husband's responsibility not to dump them off on other people so she could go party and all that kind of stuff. Okay? She gonna make sure her children are very healthy in all points. She's going to be there for her children before she be there for anybody else except her husband and the Lord Jesus. She is health conscious. She's going to make sure she eats right because she's going to take care of her body because she know that spirit of the Lord uh, is in there. A woman that doesn't take care of her body, she, she don't have the spirit of the Lord because she knew that the spirit and her soul resides in her body. So she know she's toning around her soul and spirit. A counterfeit. She was said, but you could tell she have, and don't take this in the wrong way. Don't take what I'm about to say in the wrong way. Some of these counterfeit women, they have a lot of unnecessary mental problems, unnecessary health problems because they don't take care of themselves. They don't. If a woman's health conscious, she's going to make sure she get enough rest. You understand? She's going to make sure she gets a little breath because she know that she can't be stressed out. And that means, brother, you don't supposed to be stressing your woman out. Okay, brother? Don't stress her out because she got, she got to be health conscious. Number four, 
She have a servant mentality when it comes to the Lord, her husband, her child, her children, her family, friend, and especially strangers. A woman that's other than that, she might care for her, her children or for her husband or whatever. She might care about her family and friends, but a stranger, she will, she won't even, she won't even consider a stranger. She would actually talk about a stranger and say that he or she need to get a job. They're born. Whereas another woman that had the spirit of the Lord, even if she does another person, she got to care and hard for them. You know why? Because she got the Lord in her. Number six, she is a wise steward. What do I mean? She's a wise steward. If you put, if you a man can't entrust the woman with the uh, bank book and the credit cards, if necessary, he can do that. He don't have to watch. He don't have to go behind her and look at his bank account and stuff like that. He don't have to do all of that. He don't have. What, what, what do I mean by that? He don't have to constantly do that. Because he know that she is wise. She know how to handle the money. He knows that she's not going to be doing off the wall stuff with the money. He don't mind if sometimes, as long as she take care of the needs of the home and something is set back for the family, she could do a little something if she want to. So he's not going to trip on it. Number seven, she's industrious. She's not a lazy woman. She's not lazy. And that's self-explanatory. Number eight, she's a good homemaker. She's going to make sure that home is on point. Along with the husband and the children and some children there, she's going to make sure that everything is on point. When you walk in the door, it's going to smell good. Okay? And not going to smell like uh, the public restroom, some of the public restaurants. It's going to, when you walk in the door, it's just going to hit you that, that fresh smell. Because she, first of all, she's a clean woman. So she's going to be conscious of that, okay? So she's going to make sure that home is together. Number nine, she's time. She think about time. She got, she make time for the Lord. She make time for the family. I mean, her husband, her children, her child, her children, her, her family, friend, and herself. And the brothers don't trip when the woman need time for herself. Everybody needs time for herself. So brother, don't be tracking her. Don't put these tracking advice on the phone unless she's, uh, a counterfeit. Now, if she's a counterfeit, you might, you, some of you brothers, you might want to do that. You know what I mean? You might want to. And that same thing too, sister, some of these men, they are counterfeit. Okay. But we're talking about a woman that got these type of qualities that a man of purple would never let her go. And number 10, she's beautiful. When I say beautiful, she's beautiful on the inside out. She makes sure her spirit is together, her soul together. Then when it comes to the beauty, this outside beauty, she is clean. She's conscious of how she looks, okay? She is conscious how she looks, not only in the house. She is conscious how she is in public. Let me tell you all, let me tell you all this before I leave. Some years ago, and I think I have told you all this before. I think I have told you this. Brothers, some of you brothers, and some of you got the the wives, okay? If you go, brother, if you're gonna invite men to come over to your house, let me tell you this, brother. If you're going to invite men to come over to your house, how you doing, Kara? How you doing, Lisa? I'm trying to be careful what I say, brother. If you're going to allow men to come over your house. If you invite men to come over your house, you need to check what your woman wearing around these men. You need to check because brother, some of your homeboys that when they come out your house, they're not blind. They're not blind. Let me give you all the situation. And I, and I have told you all this before, but I'm going to give you a situation. A few years ago, a few of us guys, we went over to this guy friend house. And you see, we got we take care of our homes and stuff, but we like to play Madden football, okay? Yes, we like playing Madden football, but guess what? 
We don't sit home all day playing Madden football, okay? We get together sometimes, do that. But some years ago, it was this guy. Um, when you go when you go into the restroom, when you go into the restroom, I talk about the restroom where everybody not in the not in the bed the bedroom bathroom. I talk about where people go that's visiting. His woman used to have her Victorian Secret underwears, you know, on that bar, you know, on the bar of the shower. All her Victorian Victoria's Secret underwear just flop flop over there, right? I can understand if she if she having in the bathroom or something. So all now we all know what she be wearing up on her clothes, right? We all know it. And then she used to walk she used to walk around showing a whole bunch of stuff. And you know, we be trying to play we be trying to play PlayStation and stuff like that, but she walking, you know, you playing PlayStation, she walking, showing all that stuff, and you doing like that. I, I, I threw an interception. God, you know why? Because she, you, you get distracted. She got, she had all that stuff walking in front of you, right? So let me tell you this. One day, I left my control over to this guy's house. I left my control over to this guy's house. He said, Tony, cause I was looking for it. And he said, Tony, you left your control in my house. I said, thank you, brother. And, and I said, uh, when can I get it? He said, um, I'm about to go home and you can meet me at the crib to get your control. I said, okay, cool. So I got in my car, went over to the other side of town, right? When I got there, his car was not there. His car was not home. So I called him on the cell phone. Hey, brother, where you at? Man, man, I'm still at work, man. But guess what? You know, just go to the door and tell my girl to give you your control. I'm, I'm still at work. I'm, I'm working over. Just go to the door and tell my girl that you that'll get your control. Okay? I said, mm, all right. Okay. Thank you, bro. I walked to the door. Keep in mind, the door was like, if you look at a football field, where my car was parked at to the door was like 10 to 15 yards. Keep this in mind, 10 to 15 yards. As I approached the door, my something was going on on the inside of me. I was saying, I wonder how she's going to be dressed now. Let me tell you how she was dressed, my brothers and sisters. I'm about to tell you now. She opened the door. Yeah, see, Sister Carrie, remember that story. She opened the door, and she had the little top on. She had that little top on, and it stopped right here, right? It was a cut-off top. And you know, you you sister, if y'all don't have no bra on, you can see some of the, the meat. You know how y'all, y'all the meat of y'all breasts be showing? Now, I ain't talking about the nipple, but I'm talking about the meat part. Because you see the thing up here, so the meat part, some of the meat part of her breast, they was like here, right? And you see her nipples, they were like this, like you. You ever you all ever seen the, the, the Western story how they used to pull those pistols out like that? Her nipples were like her nipple was sticking out, right? Her nipple was sticking out. And they were pointing at me. I started to say, I give up. You know how they do on the with. I give up when you they point the gun. I give up or the police come up on you. I give up. But anyway, she came there and she, she said, and then not only that, she had these shorts on and I must say this. She she was a, a very attractive woman and she was fine. She was a attractive woman and she was fine. She had it going on. Y'all remember that song by that guy say uh some of you old school people, y'all remember that song about she's a bad mama jammer, just as fine as she could be. This chick was just as fine as she could be. Sister Flo, she would not know, she would not know adjustable seven for Sister Flo. She was like A eight, a eight point five. If you look at a woman from zero to ten, ten being the highest as far as outside appearance, she was like about an eight point five. Now she had graduated Sister Flo, and that would not make up on Sister Flo. She she went on to just for seven. She was like an eight point five. So she came to the door with the little top on. That's right. She came with the little top on and nipple sticking out. And I'm looking. I looked because it was it was showing my brother says I just got to be honest with you. I looked. I looked. I looked. But anyway, 
and then you, she had these real shorts on, and they were fitting. Those shorts were fitting and was showing all her assets. It was showing all her assets, right? All of them. Yeah. And so, I was just looking at her. I was in out, right? I was in out, like. And she said, "You want to come? You want to come in? This is this is how it went. This is how it went." Tony, uh, hey, Tony, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? You want to come in and get your control? Uh, no, uh, 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 uh. So she turned, she turned. And she was walking. She was walking. And it was like in slow motion. And you, some of you women, you know how y'all do it. You know how some of y'all women do it. She was walking. And remember I said she was like that song, Bad Mama Jamma. You see, you all, I know this surprised you all, but I'm a human, okay? I know that surprised some of you, okay? Y'all might want to unfriend me after this. I, and y'all might not want to look at this, but I'm just telling you the truth. She walked off. When she was walking on my brother and sister, her her rear, it was doing just like this. It was in slow motion. It was doing just like this as she was walking. As she was walking. she It was going up and down like that. And I was doing like this. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I was, just, I was just looking. I was just looking. And it was like in slow motion like you're looking at a movie, right? So... It's the long hallway, and she, and she, and she, I could see her, and her back to me, and she bent over, and picked up that control off that table, and when she bent over, when she bent over, she, the shorts were already short, and her butter, some of her butter, so that means her her shorts went up a little bit, and remember I told you it was fitting everything too, right? So I was seeing, I was seeing some. I was seeing some things. I was seeing some. I was seeing some UFOs. That's why I was looking at some UFOs. So she turned around, and she came down. She put the control in my hand, and she was just looking in my eyes, and I was looking in her eyes, right? And she said, "Um, is there anything else you want?" And you all know how TV, on TV, how you doing, Sister Harvey? You know on TV, y'all see that thing on TV went to that, ooh. That how my throat went, ooh. And so I said, no. Nah. I said, no, nah, I'm straight. I'm straight. She said, you sure? You sure it ain't nothing else you want? I said, no, it ain't nothing else I want. And so I turned. I turned. And remember I said, the door was like 10 to 15 yards like you're on the football field. My brother and sister, it seemed like it took me maybe 30 minutes to an hour to get to that car when I was walking. So when I got in the car, I was sitting in the car, and you all know in the cartoon, Sister Harvey said, make you hungry, didn't she? I plead the fifth. But anyway, um, you all know when you look at the cartoon, how, how, how you doing, Sister Joan? How you doing? You all know how when you look at the cartoons, right? You know, like you might have a, a cartoon angel on the shoulder right here and a cartoon devil right here. I've seen the car. And the cartoon angel, the angel right here was saying, and when I said cartoon angel, cartoon devil, this represents the conscious. How you doing, Sister Twilight? This represents the car conscious. Thank you, Sister Flo. So the cartoon angel was saying, okay, Tony, um, go ahead, crank up the car. And go. And the cartoon devil said, Man, you see all of that. And you mean to take your boy is at work, Tony. Your boy is at work. It's gonna take him a while to get home. She don't normally dress like that when you uh when you be over here, does she Tony? And I was saying, No, she don't normally dress like that, devil. No, she doesn't. And then the little angel said, Tony, put your car in reverse and leave. Now, Tony, the devil. Tony, are you going to leave all that unattended? 
this woman actually asks you, was there anything else she need? Her, she, you saw that what she had on. She does she normally wear that Tony when you are uh, come there? The angel Tony, she, you were going through a period of temptation, Tony. She just tempting you. You need to do like Joseph, Tony, and run. Tony, Joseph, remember when Joseph ran, he had to do some time too, didn't he, Tony? He had to do some time. Do you want to do some time, Tony? No, no I want to do no time. Tony, 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 back your car up. The bottom line is this. I backed my car up. I backed my car up. And I left. That was temptation. If a woman had the quality, a man purple would never let her go. You see, what she did at that particular time, she was a counterfeit. She was a counterfeit. She at one way when my boy was around. And I was around and other guys around, but when my boy was not around, she acted differently. You understand? That's my point. The topic, if a woman had these qualities, a man or purple would never let her go. As a matter of fact, she left. Yes, Sister Flo, I passed the test, but that was a hard test. It was temptation. And let me tell you this, my brother and sister, before I go, let me tell you all this. Listen to me carefully. Married men get tempted sometimes. Married men can get tempted. Married women can get tempted. So don't think just because you're in a relationship, you can't be tempted. If you in a especially if you in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship, my brother and sister. You're going to be tempted. Satan know, brother, what type of women you like. He he knows what, what you like. He knows it. Satan been checking you out. Sisters, Satan know what type of men you like. He been checking you out. Brothers, you might have a very a tr nice woman in heart. You might have a, a woman that look nice on the outside. But there are other nice looking women out there too. I'm talking real talk. Sisters, there are some men, your man could be nice on the inside and he could have a modest income. I'm just using this example, but there's another man that can make more money than your husband. Or he could provide you more assets than your husband. Why am I using it? These are illustrations of temptation. These are illustrations of temptation. With temptation, my brother and sister, every man and every woman will face temptation in your relationship. Ain't no such thing as you will not face no temptation in relationship. You will face temptation. The point about temptation, my brother and sister, is this. With the temptation, God will provide a way of escape. God will provide a way of escape. What do I mean by that? Let me let me let me uh give this to you, my brother and sister. In the book of James, James, the book of James. Who is James? I'm not talking about James Brown. I'm talking about Jesus' brother named James. Jesus had, for some of you, you may not know this, but Jesus had four brothers, and their name is in the Bible. You can, it's in the, it's in the Old Testament. It named four of them. Okay, Jesus had four brothers, and he had some sisters. When he said sister, it didn't have the number of sisters. It just says sister. It had an S on it, so a plural. So for those of you that didn't know it, Jesus actually had some brothers and sisters after he was born. Jesus' father was God. His brothers and sister daddy was Joseph. But we talk about James, one of Jesus' brothers that wrote 
one of the books in the New Testament. This is what James said when he was inspired. Listen to me carefully, my brother and sister. James 1, 13 through 18. James 1, 13 through 18. Listen to this very carefully. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempt he any man. God does not tempt us, my brother and sister. God would test us. That's a different. God would test us, but God never tempt us. Just, uh, uh, an example of a test. Remember that story about Abraham offering up his son Isaac, but God had a ram in the bush. That's a that's a test. That one, nothing about temptation. That's a test. So God would test you, but he won't tempt you. Satan would tempt you. Let me go on with this. Neither Tempt he in a man. Now check this out. But every man is tempted. It said every. What is man? It go for a woman too. Every man. And then you got one man. But it don't have the W O. So some of you sister don't don't say well it didn't say no women. So that means we exempted. We don't get tempted. Yes you do. If you don't, if you lying, if you if you ain't flying, you lying. Now however you want to say. It. But look. It said, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Satan know what you like, brother. Satan know what you like, sister. So Satan know what to put in front of you. He know what to put in front of you and you enticed. Then when the lust have conceived, that means when you agree to it, it brings forth sin. What is sin? When you violate the law of God and when sin is finished, it brings forth death. So you see my point, my brother and sister. So I'm here to tell you today, my brother and sister, even in the best relationship, you're probably going to get tempted sometime. OK, but God always have a way of escape. This is what the Bible say about that. It is common to man. Every person experiences temptation. Don't think you are the only one that has to contend with uh, being tempted of the devil. God is a faithful deliverer. God will also provide a way of escape. You understand that? The Bible says God will provide a way for escape. In, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, First Corinthians 10, 13, it said that there had no temptation taking you, but it's common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. You understand? So God, no temptation going to come, my brother and sister. But with the temptation, God going to always provide a way. Like Joseph did. Joseph ran. Joseph ran. I walked away. Joseph ran. I walked. Okay? On that episode. So my brother and sister, I'm glad that you all had, you took time to be here tonight. I hope that I was able to expound something to you. Not explain, but expound something to you. My brother and sister, remember this. You see this t-shirt? This t-shirt? This is what relationships is about. It's about God, his relationship to man, his relationship to the woman, and the woman and man together with God. It takes three. It takes three for a relationship. Remember that, my brother and sister. It takes three for the relationship. If you're interested in getting something like this, just hit me up in the inbox okay, if you're interested in it, okay? This right here, Okay. I love you, my brothers and sisters. I really, really do. Thank you so much for what you do. And thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, my brothers. I love you, my sisters. Peace out.